Okay, if, can you hear me? If you if you can hear me, let me know and I'll start using the microphone, but I, I would prefer not to. Um, my name is Dan Schultz, um, and I'll tell you a little bit about me, and then we'll get into this. Um, I'm a precinct committeeman. I became a precinct committeeman in 2007. I grew up in a small town in Wisconsin. I had a full-blown civics education in seventh grade in the little town I grew up in. And I knew all this, what I'm presenting to you, I, I knew all this stuff, but then I went into the Army, okay? I went, I went to West Point, I graduated, became a military intelligence officer. I was a counterintelligence special agent, and I was also a human intelligence officer. And the training I received and the kind of work I did when I was in the service uh, causes me to think about things a little bit differently, as well as the fact that now I'm a trial lawyer. So in both endeavors, for example, in the, in the military, we had very specific things that we needed to accomplish. We had to go find the right people and, and, then, and then recruit them and send them on secret and dangerous missions. And if they screwed up and we didn't train them properly and we didn't define the mission well enough, they weren't going to make it. Okay? And they were going to be disciplined in their, their existence by the government. Okay, so it was real serious business. So what we always try to do is, okay, what's the goal? And work backwards from the goal. The same thing with trial, being a trial attorney. I have to, if I want to win the trial, I have to get in front of the jury at the end and be able to say certain things and get certain pieces of evidence in to, a, to be able to make the arguments I need to make to get them to where I want them to go. So you have to figure out what those things are and then work backwards, how do I get that stuff? Politics is no different. Different. We have to define the goal. Okay, so, so what's our goal right now? You know, say it all out. Here's what it is. We have to elect better people, right? Okay? So working back from that, how, how do we do it? The first thing we've got to do is we've got to make sure they get on the primary election ballot. And we've got to make sure that the best conservative in that group wins the primary election. The reason that's not happening all across the country is right now, believe it or not, in both major parties, and I'm going to talk about this in a nonpartisan way because I know you're a nonpartisan group, but um, half of the best positions in the parties are vacant. Okay, so how many in this room right now, raise your hands, already are precinct committee in a political party? Okay, so we've got three. The rest of you, this is really for you, but it's also for the other three because I'm going to teach you some things about how to recruit more precinct committeemen as well. And then how to conduct yourselves as precinct committeemen. So, this strategy, this neighborhood precinct committeeman strategy, is the answer for taking back your political party. It's the answer for electing conservatives. And the most important, this is the most important thing you'll ever learn about saving your country. And the parties aren't going to tell you this because they don't want you in their parties. I'll explain a little bit more about that in a second. So here, here it is in a nutshell, okay? I'm not, I could go through it all and then come up with a conclusion, but this is it, and I'm just going to read this to you. PCs, precinct committee, they're the card-carrying members of, the, of a political party. They elect all the leaders of the party, okay? And they're in the best position to get out the vote with the other precinct committeemen in their precincts. My precinct, we had over 86% of Republicans to vote in the election. Countywide average was 77% of all voters. But we got 86% of the Republicans out. Um, so half of these slots are vacant in the major two parties. If conservatives will fill up these PC slots, you can then own the party. Now nationwide in the Republican Party, there's 400,000 of these slots. 200,000 are vacant. Just 200,000. There's millions of Tea Partiers. Why aren't you invading the Republican Party and taking it over? There's, there's millions of gun owners and gun owners of America in the NRA. Why aren't you uniting inside a, inside a political party? Do you want more people like Rand Paul or not? If you do, get into the party. And I'm going to tell you right now, I am not hopeful for the country. I'm not hopeful that at the end of the day tonight, that any of you are going to do a damn thing, and I may be wasting my breath. The only reason I'm here is because I care about my kids, and I hope that you will help help me take back this country.
through the political process so my kids don't have to live under socialism. So instead of, instead of the parties right now being half strength, and I'm going to use the Republican Party as the example because it's my party. It's half strength and it's ideologically split. We got hardly any Rand Pauls in our party. And the reason we don't is because there's not enough conservatives in the precincts getting out the vote for the best conservative candidates. So if you're a conservative, you, you've got to become a, a PC. And there's plenty of slots available. In Maricopa County, in the 40% uh, of the 724 precincts don't even have one precinct committee. And we're only half filled in the county. And statewide, it's worse. So, again, what's our goal? How are we going to achieve that goal? It's to take back our government with better people. Okay? And so what, what does that really mean? You've got to elect constitutional conservatives like Rand Paul or Ted Cruz and Mike Lee and people like that. And, you, and, and by working backwards from the goal, we figure out how to do it. So I'm going to tell you how to do it tonight. <coughs> First, okay, he's got to get to the general election ballot, right? To run against the Democrat if he's a, if he's a conservative Republican or vice versa. But to get to the general election ballot, you've got to win the primary election. Every incumbent, when they come back to stand for re-election, there's two elections, the primary and the general. You can take the, some of these incumbents out in the primary if you if you organize and unite politically. So he's got to get the most votes in the primary election to keep on going. To get the most votes in the primary election, that's the most important one, you've got to have the best get out the vote effort of all the candidates. And see, when you're a precinct committeeman, you are top dog. Nobody in the party can tell you to do a damn thing. You can do whatever you want in that primary election. So if there's five candidates running and four of them are rhinos and one of them is a conservative, I can, I can go bad mouth and trash those four rhinos if I want to in my precinct. Or, or anywhere else for that matter. And we have a really good system here in Arizona. It's the, I think it's the best one in the country. Some of them, you got to pay dues. There's no dues in, in, here in Arizona. You get elected by the other Republicans or, or the other Democrats in your, in, and, or, and the independents, because the independents can vote in these elections too. Um, so you gotta have the greatest number of PCs in your in, in your precinct. I've got a precinct with 12 precinct committeeman slots. We had 11 filled after the redistricting. My precinct got bigger. So what did we do? We immediately started cold calling people and surveying them. People who always vote. And we asked amongst ourselves, you know anybody who's really conservative? You know anybody? And we recruited three more. All they had to do was fill out one piece of paper, and they ran unopposed and got elected. And now they're helping us. Like I said, we've got 86% in my precinct. And there's others in my legislative district that got 88% plus. So uh, a political party, a precinct committeeman, a political party precinct committeeman, you're the best tool then to make change politically. So how come, why is the center-right country? Everybody says, oh, we're a center-right country. Oh, we're center-right. Well, how come, why are we electing constitutional conservatives? Because not enough of them have been involved in the political party. I mean, this, the people in this room prove my point. And I'm guilty as charged. I wasn't doing this until 2007. I moved over here from, from Arizona and over there. I was involved in politics. I thought I was a, yeah, I was a, formed the Lawyer's Second Amendment Society when the assault weapons ban was passed. And I was in an NRA members council. And I helped Susan Brooks in her campaign. She ran against Jane Harmon. She got beat. And it was through voter fraud, and he proved the voter fraud, and I thought I was doing everything great. And, I, um, and, and then I moved over here, and I thought, well, I'm in Goldwater country. The Republican Party is really strong. I don't have to get involved in politics here. But then around 2007, the immigration thing got really bad. And I went to a Minuteman Civil Defense Corps meeting, and some young guy stood up. I don't know who he is, in his 20s, and he said, you know, going down to the border, that's great. But there's other stuff you can do, and that is get involved in the political process here. And then he said, you got to become a precinct committee. Well, I knew what that was. So um, I did it the old-fashioned way. Uh, I called my co the county, and I said, where do I go for my meeting? They said, you go to, you're, you're an LD17 in Tempe. Go to the meeting. Here's where you go. So I went to the meeting. Okay. At that time, there were 25,000 Republicans in that legislative district. Okay. There were 22 people at that meeting. I said, where the hell is everybody? Oh, oh, uh, well, how many precincts?
increasing commitments last we have? Oh, we have about 143. Well, how many are filled? Oh, about 40. Okay, but remember, this was pre-Marxist president, okay? Nobody had woken up yet. Everybody floating along, oh, everything's great and hunky-dory, and then we elected a Marxist, okay? And after we elected the Marxist, then I started recruiting precinct committee. Okay, so if we band together inside of a political party as PCs, we conservatives. We can guarantee that conservative candidates will always win that primary election. Because pri primary elections here in Arizona are typically like in the 20% turnout range. So if you go get these low propensity voters and there's ways to do it that, that the party will help you figure out how to do, there's a thing called Voter Vault, now called GOP Data Center, and I'm trying to get our votes. You can go to those people. In my precinct, um, the people who vote 50% or less of the time, the registered Republicans, that's 35% of the Republicans. So what we do is we target them. We try to get them to the polls. The people who vote 50% or more, they're probably going to vote. 75% or more, they're probably going to vote. The 100% or certain, they're always going to vote. So you don't have to really, you don't have to go knock on every door. You just knock on targeted doors. You don't have to, uh, and I'll tell you more about how we did it uh, uh, in, in a few minutes. Okay. PCs are powerful, okay? And like I said, over half of these are vacant. Only precinct committee men elect the political party officers. Who elects the RNC members and the DNC members? Who, who does that? Yeah, indirectly, PCs do. Who elects the county chairman? Pre the, the precinct committee in Maricopa County all get to vote for that, okay? And at the legislative district level. State committee, for every three elected PCs you have, you get one state committee man. I'm also a state committee man. I got to, I got to cast a vote in who became the Arizona GOP uh, uh, chairman recently. Um, and this stuff is not hard. The bylaws of your typical legislative district committee, the lowest level, are maybe 10, 10 pages. Uh, the county is maybe 20 pages. The state, uh, maybe 25 pages. And the RNC rules are 42 pages. That's it. I mean, that's all you have to read to learn how to do this. Um, and like I said, the RNC, they do not want you to do this. The DNC does not want Democrats to do this, okay? Um, because they like everything just the way it is. So, only precinct committee can vote to endorse candidates in the pr primary. So, like, for example, legislative district 18 that I'm in, if we want to, the next go-around, because the three guys we elected to the legislature, they're all Republicans, but they're not very good Republicans, they're not very good conservatives, maybe I'll run against them. And then maybe my legislative district will endorse me and two other people to run against those incumbents and throw those rhinos out. And that's what we're thinking about doing. But the reason we're able to do that is because we became precinct committee in a political committee of a party, of a political party. Okay. So only precinct committee. Oh, i got to go back there one more time. Let's see. <coughs> one other thing. Uh, I think I'd get to this eventually, but I might as well tell you now while I'm thinking about it. Let's say that one of these guys from my legislative district committee decides, ah, I don't want to be a legislator anymore. Quits. Well, they, by statute, they have to fill the slot. Who, 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 who fills the slot? PCs. Yeah, the PCs do. Not the registered voters. That was a Republican, and he quits. The Republican precinct committeeman, and only the precinct committeeman, they have a meeting, a caucus meeting. And they can, they can and, and anybody who wants to come to that meeting and say, I want to be the next legislator, can say, I don't, say it. And then as soon as they come up with, th they vote three names, those three names go to the county board. Board of Supervisors, and they have to pick one. They get to pick one. But if all three are conservatives, because you have a, a majority of conservatives, and they're all Democrats, liberal Democrats on the county board, you've just elected a new conservative. That, so PCs have real political power. So think of it as your, your precinct as your political neighborhood. It's a small subdivision in a state. You've got 15 counties. Maricopa County has 724 precincts. Like I said, 40% don't even have one. <coughs> well, we're going to fix that. I want you to help me fix it. And there's one PC per every 125 party registered voters per precinct, okay, by statute. 
So here is Legislative District 18. Okay, I don't know if you can see my pointer or not. Yeah, that's not very bright. That's it right there, okay? It's over by, it's like part of Tempe, part of uh, Chandler, maybe uh, I think a little bit of Mesa and uh, Ahwatukee basically, okay? And now this is my precinct, this is Corbell precinct. Now let me go back. We've got 49,822 registered Republicans in Legislative District 18, 244 PCs, 445 slots. That's just under 50%, I think. I think uh, I I, just over? Okay, great. Yeah, I think it is just over. Um, Corbell Precinct, my precinct, 1,446 Republicans, 12 PCs, 12 slots. The precinct used to be this, my precinct was this. And we added this piece. That gave us four more slots. So we went from eight over here to twelve for the whole. And when, see, when you've got all the PC slots filled up, getting out to vote is easy. I took, I, we, we had a strategy for doing it, using voter vote. We targeted the low propensity voters. I call them vinyls, voters in name only. They don't vote very often. And so we made phone calls to them, we gave them a sample ballot, and, and then um, we um, dropped literature off at their door, the sample ballot and the candidate literature. And see, once you do it a couple of times in the same area, you get really efficient at it. And, um, and we've done it now like four, two or three election cycles, and we're pretty good at it. And it, does, it took me um, three hours in the primary and three hours in the general to make some phone calls and deliver some literature to doorsteps. Now, is your country not worth six hours per election cycle? Because that's all it takes. And one meeting a month. And you don't have to go to the meetings if you don't want to. And let's say they're having an election meeting. You can vote by proxy in, in Arizona. You don't have to go to the meetings. And you want to be able to vote because you are electing the leaders of the party. Okay. So it's been called the most powerful political office in the world. There's a, a good, if you Google that, it'll take you to Phil, the Eagle Forum site. Phyllis Schlafly has this great uh, <coughs> on it. You can download and print it. And he's got a little booklet too. This is the most powerful strategy to take back control. It's the only strategy, folks. It's the only way. If you want to take back the government, you got to take back the political party. To take back the political party, you have to become a president. <coughs> You can't yell and scream at the party. You can't yell and scream at the incumbents. They, they don't have to do it. You, if you just keep going to town hall meetings and screaming, nothing's going to happen. The way to get things done, if you really want to scare the incumbent Republicans and the incumbent Dem Democrats, if you're a Democrat, go get everybody who thinks like you and invade your local uh, district committee meeting and take YouTube video of all of you new people standing outside the door and put it up on YouTube and then send it to your incumbent and say, we're coming after you. That will get their attention. They could care less if you come to a town hall meeting and, they, and scream at them. Big deal. They'll take it. Then they'll go back and they'll do whatever the hell they want. You think those rallies did a thing to stop Obamacare? Well, obviously they didn't. They passed it. Despite knowing that people didn't want it. They did it anyways. The only way to change the program is to change the people who are in it. Period. Okay. Okay, and again, it, this is easy stuff. It doesn't cost a thing. It's got a proven track record. Up in Utah, the biggest 912 group and the biggest Tea Party group back in 2010 figured this out. And they have a different system for electing their senators. The senator comes back. And instead of facing a primary, if he goes to a nominating convention and gets 60% of the delegates to vote for him, there's no primary. If no one candidate gets 60%, the top two go to a primary. Well, Bob Bennett came back to Utah, and he didn't know that these, all these Tea Partiers and 912ers had figured out the rules. And what they did is they went to these caucus meetings, and they, got, they, they stood up and they said, we want, I want to be a delegate to, to that convention. Or, or, or they knew who the conservative was and they all voted for that good conservative. They doubled the number of delegates to that Utah uh, uh, convention. They went there and on the first ballot, 
uh, Bennett uh, barely got 40%. You, you got to get at least 40% to stay in it. There was about seven or eight people. He barely got 40%. On the second ballot, uh, he didn't get 40%. So he was toast. He was gone. He, didn't, he couldn't even run in a primary in Utah. It's because conservatives up there figured out that the real ball game of politics is played inside the political parties. Okay? So, like I said, this has been... When I was a kid growing up in Wisconsin, everybody in town knew who the precinct committee was. My dad was one. Okay, My, my dad was uh, 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 on the city council, was on the county board. It was a rural county, only 22,000 people in the whole county. I had an uncle who was a mayor of a small town, another uncle who was a town clerk. Um, and, and so, I remember growing up as a kid, all of this stuff... This was, you know, before TV and radio quite so much as it is now. I mean, it, that had all started, but still there. In, in Wisconsin, the precinct system was still working. Okay, my, like I said, my dad was a precinct committee. Um, we're not called that back there. We're called, I think, ward captains. Um, and, you know, there, there's no, no dues, no, you know, not, no, no mandatory duties. It's, it, it's, the political parties are voluntary associations of like-minded. Okay, uh, so but we got we've gotten away from all this, and the the people who are in charge of the parties love it because they can keep they keep it's like a club, right? Uh, and so we're invading the Republican Party here in Maricopa County. It's completely changed now. John McCain he won't come to our any of the county events because he's probably going to get booed, okay? Uh, and he knows it. So um, so it's so again. This isn't for you if you won't go to a monthly meeting. Uh, it's not for you if you won't walk a precinct on behalf of a candidate or make a few phone calls. Uh, clipboards. It's, it, if you don't want to pick up a clipboard, and you know, there's a. You, uh, everybody says I'm a political activist. Uh, uh, one of our, uh, <coughs> some of you guys I've heard you talk about the Deep Valley, uh, David, uh, David, what's his name? Can't think of his last name right now. He's kind of a libertarian Republican. Um, he, he, he says this. This is, a, this is my definition of a, of a political activist. If you haven't gotten a signature for something or someone to get on a ballot, you are not a political activist. Precinct committee meant to get on the, have, have to get t like 10 signatures or less. That's it. And if you blow that deadline, you just fill out one piece of paper and get it notarized. So you live in the precinct and you want to run as a right. That's it. Just a few signatures. It takes me a half hour now to get my signature. And then once you, let's say that, like, of the 12 of us, the 12 of us in my precinct, we all have to get 10 signatures because we've got, it's a kind of a big precinct with lots of Republicans. So, but no more than 10. Well, you can sign for yourself, so that now you only got to get nine. And then you can go to all, you can, like, do a round robin of the incumbents signing for one another. We did that. So it doesn't take any time. Uh, it's not for you. This is not for you if you don't think the future of your country is worth a few hours outside your comfort zone. So, because like, you might have to talk to strangers. And you might have to, you know, I hear this all the time. Uh, make, get out the vote phone calls. Uh, that's just not for me. I just can't do that. Uh, uh, going door to door, knocking on a door. Uh, God, that's just not for me. I'm sorry. That's just not for me. Well, what the hell are you doing? You've got to do something, and the way to do it is to organize and unite politically inside a political party at your monthly, local, district, party, committee meeting. Okay, like I said, a couple of generations ago, everybody knew this. This is basic American civics, okay, and there's hardly anything on the internet about it, and that's why I wrote this little Kindle ebook about it. So you've got to unite you know, at your local political party committee meetings, where you can learn to become a precinct committeeman. And uh, so, uh, like, uh, probably some of you have never been to one of these meetings. Um, so we've got to focus on the goal and the strategy to reach the goal. Okay, The goal is electing constitutional conservatives. So we've got to unite where it matters. We're fighting a political war. We're not fighting uh, a Tea Party war. It's a political war. Political wars are fought with political parties. So when the Tea Party movement started, I wasn't in it because I 
I knew that the real place to fight was inside political parties. I already was a precinct committee member. So what I did is I went to the Tea Parties and recruited the conservatives there. I had a big sign. I had these flyers. My sign basically says, you can, you, there's video of it on YouTube. It basically says, you want to really do something, become a Republican Party precinct committee member. Ask me how. And then I handed out my flyers and I recruited PCs. And get, get this, Maricopa County leaders at the time, the state leaders, I told them, these are target-rich environments. This is where the conservatives are. Perfect. Go there. Improve. No, no. Gee, uh, we, don't know. we don't know what we might get. Uh, I can, you're not going to get moderates. There aren't any moderates at the Tea Party rallies. They're all conservatives, in one shape or another. And we, we ought to bring them into the party. <coughs> See, they, that might upset the apple cart too much for them. Well, tough tacos. I want to take my country back. <coughs> So, and then, after I started to have some success, then they, now they wanted to help me. You know, and they said, oh, Dan, would you like to come to the next tea party and uh, recruit? And can we get some of your flyers? So, so they came on board. So, so how, how to pick a party? Well, that's like easy. Read the, two, read the party platforms. If you go to my w little website down here, it's the Precinct Project, oops, uh, wordpress.com. Uh, it's on the flyer. Um, stamped on the flyer. I've got analysis of the two parties. It's pretty, it's pretty simple. The Republican Party platform, it's very long and drawn out, but it's based on our Constitution and our founders' principles and values. Democrat Party, it's based on socialism, period, and Marxism. So, they don't want you to know that half of these slots are still open, and that it's easy, and why not? Because they're, it's because of their <coughs> political power. They're afraid that if we all invade the party, they're gone. Well, too bad. They ought, a lot of them ought to be gone. Okay, so here's how, here's how they depict the, the, the power chart. Oops. See, it's kind of finicky sometimes. Okay. Uh, up here, uh, on the top, national committee of the party. And then... Down here, next level, the states. There's Arizona, Alabama, 48 more states. Then Maricopa County and Apache County and all the other counties. One of our counties in uh, here in Arizona, I don't remember which one it is, has no Republican apparatus at all. Zero. Okay. Then way down here is the precinct committee man, okay? But the dirt, here's a dirty little secret. This chart's upside down. Okay. <laughs> the precinct committee men are up here. They elect all those people, okay? Um, and, but they don't want you to figure this out. That's why I'm telling you. Okay. Nationally, it, it, I'm using the Republican Party as an example. There's about 400,000 precinct committee slots. Okay. 200,000 are vacant. 200,000 are filled. About 50%, probably a little more now, are conservative. 50% are something else. And it varies from state to state, county to county, legislative district to legislative district. Here in, here in Maricopa County, we've got, right now we've got 6,386 PC slots. How is that determined? Well, it's by statute. On a certain day, based on the number of registered voters of each party, you divide 125 into it, and then you get the number of precinct committee slots. Every precinct has one slot. If there's one Republican in it, then there's one Republican PC. We have some precincts, believe it or not, in Arizona, don't have even one registered Republican. There aren't very many, just a couple. Okay, so here's where we were in 2008. <coughs> At that, and so, and like I said, this number will fluctuate based on registrations. Right now, we've got about 100, 710,000 registered Republicans. So in November of 2008, after, after the primary election, that's when you're elected, 31.8% were filled. Over two thirds were vacant for the Republican Party. Okay. November 2010, uh, we were up to 29.35, we at 44 percent. June of 2011, see, along the way, you can get appointed. Right now, if you want to become a precinct committeeman and there's a vacancy in your precinct, you can fill out one piece of paper, and it gets rubber stamped, and now you're an appointed PC. And if you go to the meeting and they vote on something, you can you 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 get to vote, okay? Um, and so. And then in November of 2012, we were up to 51% filled. We got about 3,259, 51%. So we're making progress, but it's not good enough. And 
Once you, once you take control of a committee, now you can start passing resolutions. We passed a resolution at the Maricopa County Committee in December. It was unanimous. The rhinos, even the rhinos voted for it, for it because it was by raising of your hand, and they were too embarrassed not to, to condemn what Boehner did, kicking David Schweikert off that committee. Remember that? We passed a resolution. It got press. Uh, it got national press. Um, and, but the only way we were able to do that is because we had gotten a lot more conservatives on the committee. Okay, so, so where does the power really reside? Okay, so like, there's about, okay, here's another thing. Um, gee, um, I'm the chairman of the Arizona GOP. Um, how many precinct committee slots are there statewide? How many are there in each county? They don't even know that. I called them a couple of days ago. I said, give me, give me the numbers of slots in every county right now and how many are filled because I want to write an article about it. And somebody's asking me, they're doing a survey all across the country. They don't know. And they told me they were going to give it to me. Oh, we're working on it. We'll get it to you. Well, it's been five days. They still haven't done it. I mean, it's like, uh, who's in charge, really? Um, so the party is weakest at the fundamental level closest to the people, okay? The precincts. So again, 2012, 51% <coughs> filled. But then look at now we go up one, up one level, so to speak. Well, I say it's going down one level. Legislative district officers. Well, there's about 210 statewide, you know, for all the legislative districts. There's 30 legislative districts in the Republican Party. I just estimated. About, there's about 200. Well, all of those are filled. And county officers, uh, all the county officers put together in the party, there's about 180. And state officers, there's a lot of them. There's about 104. Uh, RNC delegates, of course, all three are filled. It's a GOP chairman and uh, one national committee man and one national committee woman. And so the total RNC state delegates, uh, there's 150. Of course, all of those are filled. But here, where the real power lies, at the lowest level, so to speak, but I say it's the highest level, that's what we've got to fill up. We've got the bodies, we've got the numbers. We don't have the know-how, apparently, or the or the gumption to do it. And it's not hard, like I said. So, which of these two parties is better? Okay, this is what, what the party, are. again, I'm using the Republican Party as an example. Here's what it is. About 50% conservatives, 50% moderates, and 50% is vacant. So, it's, so here, it's a much bigger party now, filled up. If all these vacancies get filled up with conservatives, now you get 75% conservatives in the party. Okay, So instead of having a half-strength, ideologically split party with no message or com competing messages, you'd have a full-strength, 75% solidly conservative, landslide, wind-producing party. You'd have a political powerhouse. Okay, So yelling from the bleachers versus being on the playing field. Here, mere registered voter. If all you are is a registered voter, you are not in the ball game of politics. The real ball, pit, ball game is played by the precinct committeemen on their local committees. Okay, so yelling, blogging, phone calls, all that to the Congress critters in Congress, they could care less. I mean, really, they really could. Uh, the ball players on the real ball field, the precinct committeemen, they. Here, here's what I do when I call. Uh, uh, well, Kirsten Cinemas, my, my Congress thing now. Uh, I don't, I'm not going to be calling her. It was, what's the point? But David Schweiker used to be. And of course, I've called McCain on occasion, and I, I used to call Kyle on occasion. And this is the way I call. I call up and I say, Hi, it's Dan Schultz. Um, I'm a precinct committeeman in the legislative district. It used to be 17, now it's 18. Um, can I talk to him? Well, the minute they hear that you're a precinct committeeman, now they know that you're in the ball game and that you can control votes in your precinct potentially. John McCain called me back in 20, 2008, leading up to the uh, uh, no, I say 2010, leading up to the 2010 primary. <clears throat> Somebody from his staff called me. Oh, hi, Dan. Uh, uh, just calling you to, to talk, you know. Uh, I said, well, why are you calling me? Said, well, because you're a precinct committeeman. I go, well, um, okay. And I said, we really like your support for John McCain. And my response was, why in the world would I support John McCain in the primary? 
And then I gave them a laundry list of reasons why I wouldn't. And I didn't. Um, but see, they'll call you once you become a PC. Uh, people running for the state legislature will call you. Okay? And the way you get to meet these people is at those monthly meetings. Because the candidates come to the meetings, and you can eyeball them face to face. I've asked Kyle hard questions on camera, face to face, and McCain. I don't know, do you remember that a uh, uh, few years ago when uh, John Kyle was at a Tea Party meeting and somebody captured it on video and went on Fox News? I shot that video. And I wrote the article about it that got it onto Fox News. About the border? Okay. About the border, yeah. And so you've got to go to the meetings where these people. Come. They come to the tea parties, but they also come to the legislative district committee meetings. Okay, so if you want to have an immediate effect on the incumbents, I believe that you've got to show them that you've got the voters to take them out of the next primary or general election. And the best way to do that is to fill up all the empty PC slots with conservatives. If you do that, then they'll take notice. Like I said, if rather than Invading the town hall meetings, invade your local committee meetings, and get organized and united politically so you can take them out in the next election. If you want to change a party and the incumbents, you've got to fill up all the PC slots with conservatives. So what doesn't work? Just going to those town hall meetings and ranting, like I said, they could care less. They really could. The progressives could really care less. I mean, the, the incumbent Republicans, some of them have a conscience, but most of them don't. Uh, and the only thing they care about is whether they can survive the next primary election. Organizing rallies, I mean, okay, the, the, you know those two gun rallies that happened over the course of the couple Saturdays? Um, I went there and another guy went there and a few other people went there and we set up a table and we tried to recruit PCs. Over the two days, we recruited 35 PCs. And that's a 1% jump. That's significant. That could mean the difference between whether or not resolutions get passed, whether or not certain officers get reelected. Um, just writing letters and faxes and emails, forget it. it. It doesn't have any impact on the incumbents. The only thing they care about is if you write to them and tell them, I'm, I'm either one of two things. I'm already a PC and I'm recruiting every other conservative I know to become a PC, so I'm going to take you out in the next primary if needed, or I'm not a PC yet, but I'm in the process of becoming one. And I'm going to recruit every other person I know who's a conservative to do the same so we can take you out in the primary if need be. That gets their attention. Like I said, rally. If you want to have a rally, rally at your local committee meeting once a month. So the way to change things is to organize and unite politically for real political action. Take over a political party, then take back the government. <coughs> the way to take back a political party is filling up every PC slot. Again, Rallies aren't going to change what the politicians do. Jenny Beth Martin standing on the Capitol lawn saying, Congress, can you hear us now? Yeah, they could hear you and they could care less. A, a rally doesn't mean a thing to them. When they see you at a rally, instead of organizing and uniting at committee meetings, political party committee meetings, they know you don't, you don't really know what, how the ball game is played of politics. It's, it's all about winning the elections. And the way to win the elections is to organize and unite inside of a party. So you, if you fill up all these slots, now you've got conservatives in control of the party they invaded. And like I said, up in Utah, they did it. And we're doing it here in Arizona, but we need more people like you to get involved. This is the most important slide of all tonight. Okay. All grassroots conservative parties would now pivot and then unite inside a political party what would happen? You would control the outcome of the next primary elections and elect the party officers in that party. So, look. Uh, oops. Sorry. So, um, over here. Tea Partiers. you got Tea Party Patriots. That's what you guys are. Tea Party Nation has about 50,000 people. Tea Party Express, I don't know how many they got. And uh, unaffiliated Tea Parties all over the country. Okay. The Asimov group. Great, great people. I've been on their website. I've told them about the precinct committee and strategy. Some of them think, yeah, that's the way to go. The 912 groups. Smart girl politics. NRA has got 4.5 million members. 2.25 uh, million of them aren't registered to vote. And of that 2.25 million, fi only 50% of them actually vote. 
And you can prove that that's proven. I mean, that's from the NRA itself. It's gun owners of America, really good group. Then you got Sarah Pack. You got Patriot Action Network. I'm on there with uh, with uh, Darla Daywald, and they embrace the Precinct Committee strategy too. They got about 90,000 people. Then you got all the evangelical Christians. Uh, again, eval evangelical evangelical Christians. 50% of them aren't registered to vote. 50% of them that are registered to vote don't uh, don't vote. Okay, it's only 25% of evangelical Christians vote. And there, I know there's some good Christian groups now that are figuring out that you've got to get evangelical Christians into party politics. So if we all, if we all of these people, just 10% of all of these people, united inside a local, inside their local party committee meetings once a month, you take over the political parties. Now you'd really have something. So why won't conservative incumbents tell conservatives to do this? Well. They don't want you to know these secrets because many of them, they're really not all that conservative to begin with. And they don't want to risk that primary challenge. And they fear that if you figure this out, you might end up replacing them too. And it's easy to rationalize. It's not my job. Uh, this is just basic civics. I mean, it's, this isn't rocket science. It's, it's just real basic stuff. Uh, and uh, too bad for the people if they don't know it, you know? Better for me that they don't know, then I'll get reelected. I mean, that's the way they think. Um, <coughs> seriously, I, I, I challenge you, go find me video of some incumbent Republican who's a conservative talking about this. They won't talk about it. And the reason they won't is because they don't want you to know about it. Uh, I'll, give you, I'll give you a couple examples of that. Tom Price, Representative Tom Price, the doctor from Georgia. He's a good conservative. He used to be the, in charge of the Republican Study Committee. I went to the Red State Gathering in uh, Atlanta, and I think it was 2010. And uh, after he spoke, I walked up to him and I said, Hey, why aren't you telling people to become precinct committee men? He says, What do you mean? And I go, Well, all across the country, half of these slots are, are vacant. They are? And then so he wrote that down. I'll get somebody on that right away. Okay. Then Pat, uh, I think his name's Pat Toomey from Pennsylvania, was running for, for the Senate. I asked him, why aren't you talking, he was with Club for Growth then, why isn't Club for Growth talking about this and getting the candidates to talk about this? Oh, that's not the candidate's job, that's, that's the party committee's job. Well, I said, who said? <clears throat> I mean, you guys got these bully pulpits, why aren't you telling conservatives to get in the party? Well, I know why he wasn't doing it, and I know why Tom Price wasn't doing it. Because they don't want anybody to know about it. Then later, Tom Price spoke at that big rally, a 9-12 rally in, uh, in uh, 2010 uh, on the Capitol Mall. And, uh, you know, the one that millions of people went to. He was there. Jim DeMint was there. And the guy from Indiana whose name escapes me right now. All real good, hard working <laughs> service. And they all spoke to the crowd. And each one of them could have said something like this. Now what you people need to do is go back to your community. Find your local party committee. They could have done it in a nonpartisan way. Find your local party committee and go find out what it means to become a precinct committee or whatever it's called back where you live and fill up all the vacancies in the political party. Why didn't they say that? Because they don't want you to do it. Because that means they might get voted out too. So it just takes a few, few hours a month to be a PC. And it's actually like, here's what I do. I say, okay, I'm busy. I got four kids. I have a wife. I'm a solo practitioner. Um, if I only got, if I could only do two month to two hours a month in po of politics, I know what I would spend it on. It would be that monthly Republican committee meeting of mine in LD18 now, because there I'll be able to work with other conservatives to figure out how to win the elections. Okay. So again, it's where the real power is, and I've already said the candidates will end up calling you, not the other way around. Um, you get to endorse conservative challengers over moderate Republicans. We did that with Bill Montgomery when he was running against uh, Rick Romney. We had to get 60%, by our county bylaws, we had to get 60%. This is Bill Montgomery, the county attorney. He had no name recognition. We, we took a vote. We got the bare 60%, because at that time there were a lot of rhinos on the committee, the county committee. So Bill now could go to every group and speak and say, I was endorsed by the Maricopa County Republican Committee. Okay? Rick Romney was not. Rick Romney was, is really a Democrat. 
Bill didn't say that, but I'll say it. He's really a Democrat. You know, he's a big, big uh, Democrat supporter, uh, uh, Republican in name only. Um, uh, and then you you can elect new conservative party leaders. Okay, majority rules, and only precinct committeemen get access to the GOP data set, which allows you to print out walking sheets to get out the vote in your precinct. Uh, efficiently, you can do it. You can print these sheets out like you can tell it. Give me just those low propensity voters, and now it prints it out, and, sh and then the walking sh order on the street, you'll know which houses to hit. And that's like I said, that's how we did it. Uh, it can also uh, tell you which independents always asked for a Republican ballot in the primary election. So those people, we figured, they're probably people who left the party and protest, but always want to vote in the Republican uh, primary election, we targeted them too. And that was, that was only a few people. Uh, and then the other thing I learned in, in terms of, of voter turnout, uh, Republicans t typically turn out in greater uh, percentages than Democrats, in greater percentages than Libertarians, in greater percentages than Greens, and also in greater percentages of uh, Independence. People who say, people who say they're independent, uh, yeah, go be independent. But you're really a nobody when it comes to politics because you can't do any of this as a registered independent. So we, the conservative people, are to blame. Okay, here's one example. Now that we've got uh, 707,000 registered Republicans in Maricopa County, that other slide said 710. It 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 fluctuates daily because people are re-registering every day. So it's about 707, 710, and 6,700 PC slots uh, with only 30, about 3,500 filled. There's got to be, in all those, there's got to be, among all those do-nothing people, the 707, there's got to be 3,200 conservatives, right? There's got to be. <coughs> um, so the, 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 the trick is finding them and recruiting them, and that's why I'm here tonight. You're part of these 3,200 we need to fill up the party. I want you to become a PC tonight. So this is basic American civics, and we have a civic duty to be involved in politics. When I was in that civics class in seventh grade, the guy teaching it, he was a reserve officer, he was a great guy, and he told us, he said, someday, kids, there may come a time when your country's in crisis, okay? And politics isn't for everybody. There may come a time when you'll need to organize and unite politically the way I've shown you, you can do it in one of the two political parties. When that time comes, you've got to do it. Well, folks, that time has come. If you don't do this, well, let's put it this way. I can't guarantee you that if you do this, uh, we're going to save the country. I can't guarantee that. But I can guarantee you that if you don't do it, if we don't do it, if we don't find enough people to do this, to learn politics and do it, we're going to lose our country. It's that simple. So here's the big question. Will you get out of the bleachers and into the real ball game of politics? Okay. So here's, just answer this silently to yourself. Have you ever been to a, a party committee meeting? Uh, do you know, off the top of your head, do you know the name or the number?